forward, now I already deliberated on one factor that is the high cost of production that is obviously related to labor because labor wage is 67 percent. So, one of the reasons why uh, our cost is high is of, of course the wage which is mandated politically and not negotiated within the industry stakeholders. Second is uh, our low productivity because 50 percent of Sri Lankan tea is still old seedling tea and 90 percent of those fields are over, almost 100 years old. So, they are well past their prime, they are very uneconomical and unviable, but the VP fields are doing well. So, this cost factor is a serious thing and third, the 150 year old very archaic colonial type wage model. Now, in the plantations what we have is attendance based wage, the workers have to attend to their place of work and pluck whatever they can or do whatever work and if they hang around in the field for 8 hours even by law we have to give the wages. So, that is one and as a result of this the, the workers know that they have to just you know mark time and then we have the other uh, very uh, important thing of mandate we are mandated to offer 300 days of work irrespective of the climate uh, the output of the field or the output of the worker and an agricultural industry as ours which is entirely weather dependent uh, on one side it is highly logical because you cannot predict the weather like in a manufacturing thing. So, when you go and commit to offering 300 days, the worker naturally knows whatever his output is, whatever the field output is, the company or the employee will offer 300 days work. So, this is a great disincentive for workers to put out their best because they know next day there will be work. So, that is another reason to uh, inimical to improving productivity because there is no urgency, there is no necessity for them to pluck more because they are anyway getting work, assured work. So, attendance wage, wage system has may have been good 100 years back where the during that time the British plant had absolute power, monopolistic power over the workers, their working conditions and how they got work out and whole structure, governance structure, legal structure supported the plantation enterprise because I believe till about 1940s, 90 percent of our uh, foreign exchange came from plantation crops which declined now it is less than 2 percent. So, the whole structure, the whole setup was uh, institutionalized to support the plantation enterprise. So, the worker had no choice, a plant had absolute control and absolute authority to get the work that he wanted. So, that era I think is gone about 50 years back and now what we are proposing going forward this model will not work in its present form. So, over the last wage uh, discussions we have proposed a revenue share model basically it is another name for entrepreneurship model which is nothing new. If you look at the smallholder sector of Sri Lanka 75 percent of our national crop comes from the smallholders and about 90 percent of the smallholders have less than 2 acres. So, they are basically very small blocks and they are sustaining a population uh, of there are more than close to 500,000 operators. So, even for argument's sake you have one, one and a half dependents on them over a million and their quality of life, their standard, their aspirations, everything is far superior to that of our plantation workers. So, the revenue share model is the workers who are experts, who are skilled, who are trained in that operation on the field, they do that work without supervision. At the moment our management model is we are supervising workers. We are from the time they came come to the field in the morning there is a checklist for so somebody enters the names. Then another person goes and checks whether people are physically on the field. Everything is geared towards checking the people and not so much the work is highly regimented uh, system uh, which which we cannot sustain in the present uh, scenario in that in that sense people have access to education, they have access to communication, they are transport and they have wide access to what is happening in the world through their satellite TV, their phones. So, they see what is happening outside and nobody wants to work as a paid wage labor anywhere in the world and this is a phenomenon that is peculiar to Sri Lanka. All over the world people want to be independent. I mean look at the computer field, everybody is working from home. So, I think our workers it is not surprising that plantation workers have the same aspirations. So, I do not think they like to be called estate workers where you work under somebody's authority and supervision uh, and you are monitored basically and you work for a wage and we are proposing a system that the plantation workers get a portion or 
number of uh, bushes or an a, uh, area, defined area where they themselves go and pluck. It is a flexible time. So, they can probably leave the children in the crest or school and go and pluck at uh, 8.30 or 9, where we take over the leaf and pay them a share of the revenue, just like the smallholder system. Of course, the ratios will change because we still will maintain the welfare, the social welfare activities, HR activities and other services and facilities that are traditionally provided. So, they are the, what we are proposing is for the workers to go and pluck by themselves, I do not think we need to supervise, they know it and hand over the leaf to us and we will pay them a portion of the revenue. While we, the state management will manage uh, and supervise the standards of work, timeliness and all the other things because we are globally certified, we need to maintain that standard otherwise nobody would buy our tea and also to provide the services that we are currently providing and negotiate and uh, agree on the basis of payment. Now, at the moment currently, uh, the plucking cost is about 35 percent of the total cost of production. So, I believe that that is what we plan to offer them because anyway that is what we are paying them now. So, I am sure the current system if we change the system and if we tell you all go and pluck, uh, you all suppose yourself, I can guarantee that the, the output and productivity will increase as much as twice. We have seen it. Wherever we have tried this in a, in a, in a small model, experimental basis, we have seen that the output increases exponentially. It has been found through research that it takes about 12 to 15 minutes to pluck 1 kilo of leaf. So, basically, I mean, if you are self-motivated, you can easily pluck, that is an average, you can easily pluck on a good season uh, 6 or 7 kilos per hour. So, even if you work for 5 hours solid, you can get 30 kilos and with the current rates, they can easily top 1500 rupees. So, that is for starters. Of course, there are times and seasons during the year you cannot pluck as much. At the same time, there are times and seasons during the year which they can pluck far more. So, uh, there will be some wins, some losses, but what you look at is the whole year, they will definitely pluck more, which will reduce the cost and when you pluck more closely, more intensity, then the quality of leaf is better, which will end up with a better quantity, getting a higher price, then they get a higher amount rate for their uh, per kilo. So, it is a win-win situation and this is what we are proposing at the next uh, wage negotiation. Mm -hmm.